All right. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in. Happy Sunday. This is Choco Melonea. I live in Canada. I am a Ghanaian by birth and I live in Canada. Today I want to make a video about a developing policy issue in Ghana. And uh, even though I live in Canada, I don't make videos talking about Canada because I'm so concerned about Africa. I want to see Africa progress. In this video, I will be speaking about the electronic levy, okay? The e-levy bill, which looks like something that the, gov the current government of Ghana wants to implement at all costs, regardless of the public asked. Please consider inviting your friend to come and watch it. Tag your friends, tag somebody you know that you think will be interested in listening to this. Okay? I know this video will step on a lot of toes, especially those who belong or who are affiliated or who are members of the ruling government. And I know this video might also make a lot of people excited, especially those who are in opposition, saying that. Hey, if Choco Melone is against this government's policy, then obviously he got to be a member of the opposition. Some of you will be trying to pin me down to a political party. I want you to invite as many people as you can to come and watch this. First of all, before I start, I want to issue a disclaimer. Now, the disclaimer here will tell you what I believe and what I don't believe. So I want you to really listen carefully. First, I do not belong to any political party in Ghana. I am a free thinking being with an intellect capable enough to tell a lie from the truth. I do not hold any political um, party card, neither of the ruling government, neither of the party in opposition or the parties in opposition. I don't intend to hold any of them. I like you to listen carefully. I do not intend to hold any political membership with any of the political parties in Ghana. Not NPP, not NDC, not CPP, not any of them. I want this to be on record. I do not intend to join any of them because I know this video can be used in the future. So I'm making it clear just for you guys to know what my intentions and my ambitions are. If there is ever a political party I will ever join, it will be a political party that will be made up of new breed of people. New breed of people who inspire new leadership into our political space. I currently do not think any of the political parties in Ghana has what it takes to take us to the promised land. Not NPP, not NDC, not CPP, none of them has demonstrated the political goodwill to lead us out of the misery we've been in for over six decades. Until I see a new movement of young people from the diaspora, from Europe, from North America, returning to Ghana to say enough is enough. I will never join any of the political parties. My conscience will not allow me and I will never join any of them. The fact that I am also speaking against this policy is not to be construed by members of the opposition that I belong to them. So this is not a banter celebration or a celebration by for, for, for the NDC that Chaka Millennial got to be an NDC. You will never find NDC in my blood. You will not even find it in my blood. I'm not a member of the NDC. I don't intend to be a member of the NDC. I think they are equally as corrupt as the current government. So they have not earned my support in any way and i don't intend to join them sorry if you're a member of the ndc and you feel offended by that but hopefully you can respect my own choices and my political view as well none of the parties in ghana has what it takes to take us out of our misery all right 
Elevi. The next disclaimer I want to issue is about taxes. I've read some of the comments. I, I made a post yesterday. And in that post, I said I'll be talking about this. I read some of the comments. For example, one of the comments there, um, the person was accusing me, you live in Canada. And you should probably know how governments develop and how countries develop. Huh? You guys pay taxes in Canada, yet you are speaking against this proposed tax in Ghana. Yet you drive on good roads in Canada. Why then are you speaking against a tax that is meant to help the people of Ghana? So this person's viewpoint is that because I live in a developed world where I pay taxes, and the taxes develop the country and construct roads, I shouldn't be against it. So here is my disclaimer to anybody who thinks Chaco Millionaire is against taxation. First, I support taxes. I pay taxes. Last year, I paid over 10,000 Canadian dollars in taxes alone. You heard me right. When I filed my taxes last year, I paid the government of Canada in excess of 10,000 Canadian dollars in taxes for monies or revenues that came to me. I am a staunch believer of taxes. Without taxes, no economy can develop. Without taxes, there will be no Western civilization. Without taxes, there will be no development in the world. I believe in taxes, but I believe in taxes that make sense. I believe in taxes that are meant to equally distribute the public good to affect everyone. I believe in taxes that are based on rationality, taxes that are based on research, taxes that are based on comparative analysis. I don't believe in draconian taxes. I don't believe in taxes that are meant to fill the pockets of a few and leave many of us in misery. I don't believe in taxes that are meant to be public thievery. I don't believe in taxes that are meant to create fortunes for a few. That kind of tax is not taxes at all. It is public thievery, and I'm against that. I personally think the e-levy is a complete agenda by the government to rob Ghanaians, to rob Ghanaians in broad daylight. And I'll make my point. You don't have to, you don't have to insult me. Make your point. I'm making my point. Comment down there and let's have a decent, civilized discourse. I'll tell you why I'm against it. You disagree with me? Good job. Write it down there and let's have a exchange. If possible, I'll bring you on my live video so we can debate this together. All right. Now, we are living in an interesting time. The history of Africa is one where our financial space has been so, so limited to the public. We live in a part of the world called Africa where the banking center has made it so difficult for a lot of people to get access to financial um, resources and what have you. Until mobile money started in Africa, many people could not have open bank accounts. Mobile money, until mobile money started, there were many people who would not have had bank accounts. In fact, the sector, because our economy is so informal, okay? Because our economy is so informal, meaning that not so many people are captured by the taxes, okay? The tax bracket, not many people are captured. Apart from those who have private jobs, registered companies working for the government, and they are paid and they receive pay slip. And then by virtue of them receiving pay slip, they are captured in the tax bracket and then they pay tax. We don't have that kind of system. In, in the kind of systems we have in Africa, only a few people pay tax. The tax burden of the entire continent rests on a few businesses, legit businesses, legit multinational companies, and a few, a few, a few of the population who actually find themselves in the public sector, the civil sector, or what have you. So at the end of the day, there are many, many people who work all right, but they don't pay tax. That is the kind of system we live in. Unlike the Western world, where majority of the people are captured, not only big, big businesses, not only government institutions, not only teachers and doctors and health workers, almost every small business is captured. Almost every small business, the person who has a small container is captured. 
The person who sells something small is captured. The person who has a house is captured. When I say captured, it means all these people, all these people contribute because the government has found a way to bring in majority of the population to be able to pay taxes. It is almost impossible to invade tax in the Western world. That is how come when people don't pay taxes, you see that they are arrested and prosecuted. Wesley Snipes had to go to jail just because of unpaid taxes. You know, many, many, many celebrities who have been thrown in jail just because they try to beat the tax system. The tax system in the Western world is so comprehensive to the point that it becomes almost difficult for you to dodge it. I, as a landlord, I have properties here in Canada. I collect rent. I cannot evade tax. You heard me right. You know why? Because even if me, the landlord, I decide to evade tax, at the end of the year, the tenants who rent my facility, they are going to declare their tax and they are going to say they paid S amount of rent to a landlord. Now, even if, if I chose to lie, the government is going to catch me because the other person who is renting from me is going to declare it and try to file their tax. Right? So at the end of the day, I have no excuse than to pay my tax. I have to report it. I also know the consequences that if I do not report my taxes, the law will deal with me. So I have a burden of responsibility to execute. In Africa, we don't have that. I've already said that. Only a few, 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 only a minority of the people in Africa pay tax. We are also living in an interesting time where technology has actually made it possible for us to have financial inclusion in the financial space. What do I mean by that? Because of technology and how we've been able to leverage technology today, softwares and all of that, we've been able to make it easy for a chunk of our population who were previously unbanked, people who did not have a bank account, people who did not trust the banking system. We've made it easy now using simple, simple technology for all these people to now be able to transact and move money around. Since mobile money started in Africa, Africa's economy has been moving towards a cashless economy. Mobile money first started in Kenya. The first mobile money revolution in Africa started in Kenya. It is called M-Pesa. M-Pesa means mobile money, M-Pesa. When M-Pesa started through Safaricom, it became so successful that other countries in the eastern part of Africa started copying it. So Tanzania embraced it. They have their own M-Pesa. Uganda embraced it. And then it started spreading. Ghana caught up with the idea. MTN pioneered this. And then MTN started. Is it possible for us to create wallets on phone where people can send money electronically and be able to use it? At the end of the day, since MTN started this, we've been able to move a long way. If you look at the number of transactions that are done through mobile money, it is ridiculously high. When I say, in other words, the volume of transactions alone, every single year you see it almost doubling and tripling and all of that. Tell you that a lot of people are trusting the mobile money system today. The uneducated person who does not have an ID to meet all the requirements, who does not have all the things that will be needed to open a bank account, now can have a bank account right on the phone thanks to mobile money, thanks to M-Pesa, thanks to MTN's mobile money idea, which was picked from Kenya's uh, M-Pesa system. Now, in the, in the Asian world or in the Middle, part, Middle East as well, there are so many, even in the Caribbean, there are countries that have also experimented with this mobile money uh, kind of transaction thing and then it has caught up so much fire. Bangladesh is an example. Bangladesh is not a developed country, but they've embraced a system of mobile money so well that it has actually made it so easy for people to move money around. People who are sending money overseas are able to send more money to Bangladesh today with no sweat, right from the phone. In fact, as I speak to you, I can literally just pick my phone and send money to Ghana through mobile money without having to go to a bank, without having to drive to a bank, just right on my phone. So at the end of the day, we call this progress because at the end of the day, many people are able to do simple transactions without going through the brick and mortar old school method of going to queue in a bank for the bank to tell you that the server is down. For the banks in Ghana to tell you, come tomorrow, the server is down. You know all those kind of inconveniences, huh?
How many times have you gone to the bank and you left happy? How many times have you gone to the banks in Africa and you left a happy person? That the queue there alone was enough to let you even miss all your appointments for the day. Even if the queue did not frustrate you, the IT system infrastructure, the IT infrastructure used by the banking system, uh, banks in Ghana alone is frustrating you. How many of you have not gone to the bank only for them to tell you that the system is down? Come tomorrow. You wasted your entire time coming to stay in a queue. How many of you haven't gone through that? And how many of you can attest to the fact that today, through a mobile money platform, you are able to quickly move funds with no stress? Mobile money has actually improved. It has taken Ghana, and not just Ghana, countries in Africa that have embraced this. It has taken us one step towards the agenda to make our economy cashless. On the note of cashless economy, we all know the security challenges that come with a cash-based economy. How many times have we woken up to read news of somebody going to deposit money at a bank and they were robbed, shot, and killed? There was a story of a man who, a Lebanese man, who went to uh, deposit huge sums of money uh, at a bank in Tema. He was shot right after leaving the bank. He was shot. Why? And robbers targeted him. He carried a lot of money. How many people have not lost their lives just in their bed to go and withdraw money from the ATM or to withdraw money from the bank or to deposit money in the bank? Are we too blind to know that mobile money has made it so easy today for you to sit at the comfort of your home and be able to do that? Now, the same people who would have actually killed you when they see you go to the bank are now turning themselves into mobile money scammers. They call you on the phone trying to get that money on your wallet, isn't it? Mobile money has actually taken out a step closer towards a cashless economy and i think it is something that must be supported by any government let's now talk about why i am against the e-levy i am against the e-levy for a number of reasons one because the person who wants to come and collect that e-levy has no sense of credibility and accountability i am making the argument that the government of Ghana has lost all credibility when it comes to collecting money from us and putting the money to good use. That is the first reason why the e-levy doesn't make sense. I'm going to say this again. I'm saying that the person who wants to come and take the money from me, money that somebody has sent me, has no right to take that money from me because I don't trust them to go and manage the money well. Can I give you some proof? It is estimated that we'll be making about 7 billion CDs per annum if we introduce the e-levy, isn't it? Good money, right? Can it construct roads? Yes. Can it build hospitals? Yes. Can it do a lot of good? Yes, 7 billion CDs. That's a lot of money. We should, we should be able to embrace that, isn't it? But let me tell you why I don't trust this government in collecting that money. Last year, According to the Auditor General's report, we lost 12 billion CDs through corruption. Through corruption. And these are not corruption that we don't know of. Institutional corruption, political corruption, co corruption by public officials. According to the Auditor General's report, we lost 12 billion CDs. If my government of Ghana is so serious about collecting money, mobilizing revenue, and using it for the public good. I will be so happy if they go after that 12 billion CDs, arrest all the people who are complicit, throw them in jail, and tell us that we've been able to redeem that money, and we are going to use it to build more schools, more hospitals, for our children and our pregnant women to go and give birth. If they go after that 12 billion, they have earned my respect. They are accountable. We should give them more money. But here is the situation. 12 billion has been lost in, according to the Auditor General's report. And this is not just the, the first time. Every single year we lose more money through public officials, complex, like corruption, official corruption. Corruption not by ghosts. Corruption by people who are in power. Corruption. 12 billion has been lost. Yet you are coming to me. To tell me and my fellow brothers and sisters we should give you 7 billion of our own money. 
you are crazy. You are crazy. Listen to me well. You are crazy. If you are the one dreaming about this, you, you are crazy to be thinking like this. You think Ghanaians are stupid? You don't think we think? Auditor General Report is just one thing I've mentioned. Do you know how many more are there? Do you know how many draconian, draconian deals and fraud this government is perpetuating against us? Money-grabbing government across Africa. Do you know how many they steal from us? Do you know how much they steal from us? And you want to come and tell people to give you more money? What credibility do you have in managing the money? Tell me. What credibility do you have? Going to the African Cup with $20 million budget to go and chase a, a, an African Cup that is $5 million for that winner? The winner of the African Cup is taking $5 million. You are presenting a budget of $20 million. Do, do you deserve my money? Should I give you more money? Nonsense. No be our money where we're going to give you. Ghanaians will wake up. I'm not here to represent any political party. I'm here to use logic to let you think. I'm here to use simple logic to let you think. To know that these people, they are in to milk you dry. That the government is there to milk you dry. Auditor General's report is not the only aspect. Go and see how much we lose through stupid deals that we do. Judgment debt here and there. You know what judgment debt is? Stupidity of government has led us to incurring S amount of debt, S amount of money. Stupidity through public procurement. Simple, simple things. We're losing money left, right, and center. You come back and tell Ghanaians to give you 7 billion CDs more through another tax. Do you already know how much Ghanaians pay? If you are a taxpayer, I want you to take your tax document one day. Or if you go and shop at the airport or somewhere in Ghana, just take your tax and see the percentage of taxes that Ghanaians pay. Especially the minority of people who actually pay the tax. Go and see how much they pay. You'll be looking at almost 17% in taxes alone. They have tax on every stupid thing. I even understand that they are planning to introduce another crazy tax at the airport. They have all kinds of crazy, crazy taxes. You see, taxes must make sense, guys. The Western world is built on taxes, but the taxes must make sense. The Canadian government, for example, used the taxes that they were collecting from us here during the pandemic, they were giving everybody $2,000 a month, guys. Listen carefully. Look at the difference. So, during this same pandemic, I want you to listen carefully. During this pandemic, Canadians who were affected by the pandemic were giving 2000 Canadian dollars every month. Where did the money come from? That's six. In fact, some of it became a debt. As we're speaking right now, the government of Canada has a huge debt. 300 billion Canadian dollars in debt. Just because of how it was able to manage the economy and support the people that were affected by COVID. You heard me right. $2,000 every month. You heard about the United States. They were giving money to the people, the citizens who were affected. This is how taxes are managed. Now look at the beauty of it. After spending all this money and giving it back to the people during the COVID, as we are speaking right now, the government of Canada is still giving people money who are affected by COVID. Every week, they are receiving about $500 every week. As we are speaking right now, they have rolled out a plan to tell us exactly how they will pay all the money that they lost because of COVID and giving it to us. They have actually rolled out a plan to tell us exactly how they are going to re recover from that. They said in 10 years, they intend to recover all the money that they blew or they spent on the people eh, that has made the economy of Canada burden with debt. They say in 10 years, they are planning to recover it in SYZ. The clear plan is the plan that you and I can read. And you can see that these are policy people, people who are in government and they have policy minds and they understand things. Is that the way we run our own there? Eh? We, we saddle our economies in all kinds of crazy debts. Debts that are not developing the economy. Debts, monies that are going into people's pockets. Eh? Politicians, left, right and center, grabbing the money, money grabbing, land grabbing. Yesterday, I was told that in Accra, eh, the government officials today have grabbed all kinds of land in Accra. All kinds of land. Officials, they've taken all of them. You go to Labadi, you go here, they've grabbed all the land. Strategic locations, they've grabbed the money grabbing, land grabbing. That's what they're doing. And then they come back and tell you, give us more money. Damn you. Only lazy Ghanaians who don't know what is going on who are going to be supporting this. Everybody should be angry about this. Not because we hate us. 
We love sensible taxes. Choco Millionaire does not hate taxes. But I hate, I hate senseless, selfish, corrupt taxes. Let's go to the second point. The second reason why I do not support the E levy is that it doesn't make any sense. It is stupid. <laughs> you see why I tell you Caucasians would think that black people are very aggressive. See the way they talk. Oh, my intestines are excited, isn't it? Because I'm angry. I'm angry. It doesn't make any sense. I just came from Churchill, but I'm already angry. Not angry because of Canada. Angry because of my country of birth. The nonsense going on there. Huh? It doesn't make any sense at all. My people in the Western world, those of you who are not from Ghana, I'm going to use examples to explain what the e levy means. After that, tell me in the comment section whether it makes sense. In the Western world, especially in North America, there is something we call electronic transfer of money. The official name for it is e Interact. Interact. How many people know about Interact or Cash App or what have you? How many people? Let me just focus on Interact. You can just go and Google it. Interact, money transfer, right? Interact. Now, Interact is just a platform that allows people to move money across the country electronically through a text message or through um, an email. I want to repeat. Interact allows me, Choco Millionaire, to pick my phone right now, send money to somebody through a text message. Did you hear that? <laughs> Interact in the Western world allows me to pick my phone, send money to somebody just through an email. Oh, yeah, you can email the money to somebody. Is it, is it sweet? It's sweet, though. I don't need to go to the bank. Oh. I can just send you money through text message, send you money through email. It's called Interact. It's a software. It's a banking software. It works. My tenants normally pay me money using Interact. They don't have to go to the bank. They don't have to go and queue up and deposit in my account. They send me an Interact. In fact, as we are speaking right now, one has come. I have not even deposited it to. One has come. I have not even deposited the money. It has come. Test message. He said, this person has sent you a test message. Deposit the money in your account. It's there. All I have to do is click on it and deposit the money. Now, here is the point now. Guys, those of you who live in the Western world, I'm going to ask you some questions, especially if you live in Canada. Imagine if the government of Canada says that all monies that you send to people through Interact, we are going to tax you 1.7% on that money. Does it make sense? My people in Canada and North America, please quick comment down below. Let me know. Let me know. All monies that somebody sent to somebody through Interact, we are going to put tax on it. Whether you are sending it as a gift to somebody, sending it to your daddy as a gift and you are not buying anything, just sending the money to somebody. We are going to test you on it. My people, it, does this make sense? Tell me down there. Those of us who live in Canada, US, and wherever, tell me about it. Does it make any sense at all? That when you wire money to somebody, they must tax that money. Does it make any sense? It, I can't think far. I, mean, I, I can't think far. If I think about it, I know the fear understand. How can you tax an electronic money that somebody has sent somebody? And you cannot prove whether it is a transaction-based money transfer or it is just a support-based money transfer. Guys, let's be realistic. Are all mobile money transactions transaction-based money transfers? Or some of them are family-based support transfers? Anytime you send a money transfer or mobile money on your phone, is it all the time that you're actually making a purchase of a transaction? Or you are paying for a service? Or there are times when you are sending it to a loved one just to support them. I'm asking you a simple question. Do you know that not all money transfers sent through mobile money are meant for transactions? Did you know that? That it is not all the time that when somebody sends money, it is for personal use, family support, gift to people. Did you know that? Did you also know that sometimes when people send money through mobile money, they are meant for be to be used as payment for goods and services. So basically, there are two reasons why people send money. Some send the money for personal reasons, support reasons. And some also send money on mobile money by way of acknowledging the payment for goods and services. 
Now, look at the illogical aspect of it. This government wants to task all of these transactions. So, whether it is meant to go and support your uncle, whether it is meant to go and be a support to your child in school, they want to take one point something percent. Oh my goodness. Where do they get their policy from? When, who, who, who gave birth to these people in power? Who gave birth to them? Sorry for a scratch. Shouldn't be saying that. Where did they get their ideas from? Where, did, where do they copy from? Who is their standard for policy making? You must learn from the best. It's called benchmark. Who do we benchmark our policies with? Is this how the Western world goes about taxes? I'm so, so incensed about this. It just doesn't make any sense. Imagine me meeting somebody now and say, you know what? I want to eat, transfer you money to support you. Go buy food with it. And then you tax me money. You tax me for sending the money to somebody to support. Does it make any sense? But look at it. It makes every sense. If you are taxing me because I am doing a business transaction, it makes every sense for you to tax me. Because it's called business transaction. It is an economic activity. You deserve to put a tax on that. But isn't there a better way to tax people? Isn't there a better way to bring many people into the tax bracket? We have weakened our local governments today in Ghana. You heard me right. Our district assemblies, municipalities, we've weakened them. We've turned all of them into puppets of the government. We've made them so weak today that they don't even have the capacity to function well and become more independent, autonomous, generating internal funds. IGF, internally generated funds, to be able to support their districts. That all the districts now are depending on the central government. So look at the implication. The many ways that we can be able to tax the economy, we are not doing it. How many landlords today in Ghana or in Nigeria pay property tax? No. Zero, isn't it? Almost zero. Only a few pay property tax, right? Here, here how about me? On each of my properties here, I pay $300 a month. Listen carefully. I want, to, I want to educate people so that we can see why our government policy guys have got it wrong. Eh? On each of my properties here in Canada, every month, I pay $300 for each of them. I cannot dodge it though. You cannot dodge it though. They already know your property in the system. They already have the data of your property. They even know how much you make on that property. They tax you whether you like it or not. They'll tax you. They'll bring the bill to you. Don't pay. They'll keep putting interest on it and interest on it. And on, they'll put a lien on your property. You know what a lien is? If you don't pay, before you realize, they'll sue you and you see the nonsense there. How many properties? Look at the number of properties we have. That today, landlords are milking the system, charging ridiculous rent across Ghana, Yet none of them pays tax. Whose responsibility is it to go for them? Are these not the people we should be targeting? Are these not the people we should be empowering our local government to bring into the tax bracket? That we should be able to identify every property in the system properly registered with ownership. Whatever they do, they must be able to report it. Is it not the way we go about it? Is it not the way that the Western world works? Is this not how the Western world works? That we have millions and billions of properties across. None of them are registered. We don't even know the owners. Yet these people are renting and making money on rent. You are not collecting from them. The person who wants to send small money to go and support the sick mother, you want to go and tax. What kind of sense is, is there? Huh? Is it not better for you to empower your local government, your district, Eh? For them to go and bring every property, landed property, every asset into the tax bracket. Is that not the job of our local government? That the city that I live in today, I cannot evade a property tax. Because they already have it in the system. Eh? They already have created it, it, it. They've already made it easy for everybody to pay tax. You have small, small businesses around. How many of them are paying taxes? Apart from the big, big corporations and multinationals, apart from the uh, Barclays Bank, the Stan Chart, apart from Echo Bank, apart from the big mining companies, how many small businesses have we been able to bring into the tax bracket? The small, small businesses registered all across Abosokai, where people are bringing in millions of businesses, right? The small, small businesses in Kumasi, the small, small businesses in town, how much effort have we put in as a government? 
to try and bring all of these people to formalize them bring them register them properly even if they are paying one ghana cities we know we are actually bringing everybody into it how much effort have you put into that is it not possible to make it difficult for small businesses to evade tax i am not a policy expert though but at least i can give you a better deal i can give you a better policy idea listen to my words carefully i'm not a policy analyst but my common sense tells me this is how the Western people do it. In the Western world, a small business, whether it has a container shop or not, cannot open a bank account without proper documents. Listen carefully. In the Western world, a small business container shop, the owner cannot open a bank account for that business without proper documentation. Two, that small business cannot also have monies coming in and coming out without showing proof of where the money came from did you hear that so if you go to a mechanic right now and that mechanic is an african eh? let's i'm using an african man here an african man in canada who runs a mechanic shop eh? if that man has a bank account if you try to pay money to him using your credit card or your debit card the first thing he will tell you is that the government will charge me tax on it too. Do you know why? Because the moment that money lands into the bank account or the credit card charge is processed through the point of sale machine, huh? he must be able to explain where it comes from. In fact, the government has already given them a mandatory system to record transactions and show proof of whatever they've done. If you don't do it, you will lose your license. If you do not follow, you will lose your license as a businessman. Whether it is a small store you have, you will lose your license. You must be able, you will be audited. Whatever money comes into your account as a small business, you will be audited. Is that what we are doing? How many small businesses have we made sure are registered today? So that if they are registered and they go to a bank, Echo Bank, ADB, eh, Barclays Bank, Barclays will now ensure that whatever money comes into the account, whether it's a deposit or withdrawal, these people can be audited for that. How many of us do this? How many governments are doing this? Lazy people in power big big english lazy people do we need do we need phd to be able to see how some people are being smart eh can't you send your policy guys eh to come to the western world and come and learn how these people do it and you just sit there propaganda manifestos propaganda eh and when some of them come out with these ideas they're actually lying on the side of their side chicks when they dream of these policies policies that are that, that are created when they are having fun with their side chicks then they come and find every way possible to push it down the throne of people the truth of people see i'm using common sense just to point punch hole into the way we go about our taxation nothing makes sense you have not been able to broaden the tax bra bracket by targeting those who are genuinely making businesses those who are genuinely running business you have failed in that aspect and you are not even showing any seriousness of doing it and yet, the laziest approach is to target a software, a mobile money software and intervention that has been able to bring almost everybody into the space of finance to make it easy for money to move around, to make it easy for robbery cases to go down because nobody is carrying a bag of money to go to the bank and to be shot. You, it just doesn't make any sense. By the way, do you know that the mobile money companies actually charge a service fee when people send their money? You heard me right. Mobile money companies charge a service fee when people send money. You send money, they charge you. You receive money, they charge you. True or false? Let me know. So on top of the service charge that these people are charging and they are paying taxes to the government for this kind of businesses, you are coming to slap an additional 1.7. You see, you see how we think? You see how we think in Africa? Eh? You see how we think? That MTN... A Tisala or whoever who that Vodafone is charging you for a service fee. And on top of that, the government is also throwing their own on top. What, what kind of people are we? And let me tell you the third reason why Ghana's E-Levy is retrogressive, not based on a pure policy research, lacks the support of civil society organizations, I'm going to tell you why it is not in tune with modern times. Watch out, people. Mark Zuckerberg is planning to introduce a platform 
that will make it easy for people to move money everywhere. It's called Libra. L-I-B-R-A. Go and Google it. It's his agenda. He wants to make it easy for everybody in every part of the world to move money around. Wake up, my people. Wake up. Wake up, my people. You don't know what time it is. Governments, you don't know what time it is. As we are speaking right now, there are a lot of technology companies that are blue chip companies that are making the effort to make it easy for people to move money across the world. No more stress in sending money. It should be so easy for everybody to send money around without paying even fees. That is the agenda. That is the global agenda. And technology is leading the way, not government. Technology is leading the way. Governments are just supposed to legislate and make it easy for us. It is already stressful for people to move money around, guys. Do you know what kind of stress people who live overseas used to go through to send money? People have to walk, drive in the snow to just go and send Western Union? People have to drive in the snow just to send? And today we have a system. Most of these money transfer companies don't even charge us a fee when we send money. Just because they want to make it easy. And yet we have governments back home that want to discourage people from sending money. Through crazy, crazy, fraudulent taxes. Governments do not know what time we are in. The time we are in is moving away from E-Levy. I, I repeat, the time we are in today is actually a movement away from E-Levy. The government of Ghana's agenda is to move towards E-Levy. You are behind time. You are not in tune with time. That's what I'm trying to say. Next reason why I am against the government of Ghana's E-Levy policy. Do you know that countries that understand the importance of a cashless economy, an economy where it is easy for people to move funds electronically without struggling, and these countries are developing countries most of the time, do you know that the smartest of these countries that understand the time we live in are actually giving cash incentive for people to receive, receive money? You, you didn't hear me why. I'm going to rewind though. Okay, let me say. Do you know that developing countries that have aspirations of growing and developing, knowing the importance of money moving around to make transactions easy, do you know that these countries are actually not putting taxes on the money that people receive? They are actually giving money to people to send money and to receive money. I'm going to give you examples so that you know the country called Ghana is behind time. They don't know what time it is. Number one example, Bangladesh. Bangladesh has a mobile money system called Bcash. You can go and Google it. Don't just listen to me. Go and do your own research. Bangladesh has a mobile money system called Bcash. Guess what? The government of Bangladesh says, Bangladesh people who are living overseas, those of you who are living in UK, Germany, Canada, US, we want to encourage you guys to send money home or to support the economy, to support your family. And by virtue of that, we want to give you 2.5% incentive for sending money. Oh my God, you guys didn't hear it too. It means that if me, Chaka Melonier, I'm from Bangladesh and I have a family in Bangladesh, the government is telling me I should be encouraged to send money to them free of charge. <laughs> And then when I send money to my family in Bangladesh, when they go to the bank or when they go to withdraw the money on their mobile money, B cash, the government is actually giving the receiver of the money an additional 2.5% of the amount they were... Oh my God. Did you guys hear that? The government of Bangladesh is giving the receivers of the money 2.5% on any amount that they receive. Go and Google it all. Ghana for Miss Miss Ramopa, Munko Gugu, Namun Shenya Koso. Oh, fine, no, I can't believe him, Mikke. Why, I know I Google Kekano Kwa can only you all Jamoya Milalo Jamobi, and Lokalia Milua and Lokali Bemi. So, a government which is a developing government, a country which is a developing country called Bangladesh, is actually encouraging the foreigners who are already nationals of Bangladesh to send money back home to Bangladesh. Whilst the government gives 2.5% on the amount that was received by the person in Bangladesh as an incentive, free money, 2.5 on monies you receive. Do you know what it means? It means if you are in Ghana right now and I send you mobile money 
When you go and withdraw, the government of Ghana will put 2.5% on top for you just for receiving money abroad. Is, is that what we are doing? You can see these people are actually giving 2.54. We, we want to take <laughs> we want to take from the people. Completely nonsensical. See the example where I give you. Go and Google it and tell me whether I'm right or I'm wrong. Eh? I don't have a PhD in public policy, but I'm smart enough to know how countries are developing. I don't have a PhD in public policy. I'm not even a government appointee. Is it too hard for our governments to see? If ordinary citizens can see what is happening, is it too hard for our governments? How come they don't even behave like people who are smart? And everything we do, we copy from the wrong people all the time. You said you have introduced a Ghana card. Which country is your standard for introducing the Ghana card? India is your standard. India, where they, they where, where, no, they feel clean now, so. India, India, want to be in the India, 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 India is not even developable. Yet, India is your standard for doing Ghana card. And look at it, too. The smart, smart countries that are doing better, you never go to them to learn. Is, is there a problem? You never learn from the best. You always learn from another corrupt one. Because you know yourself, you know you are going to steal. That is why you are going to learn from the bad ones. Country number two, where people are encouraged to even send money and receive money from abroad and giving money as an incentive is Nigeria. Guys, look around. Nigeria. <laughs> Do you know in Nigeria, the Central Bank of Nigeria is actually encouraging Nigerians abroad to send money in terms of US dollars back home to circulate around, to empower the Nigerian economy. And then when a Nigerian goes to receive that money, they are given five naira per dollar that they receive. Did you hear that? Every one dollar that a Nigerian receives from abroad, he or she is given five naira. My Nigerians are here. Let me know if I am correct or I'm wrong. An example, in West Africa, Nigeria. Nigeria is actually giving five naira per every dollar received in remittance since march last year they are running that promotion till may this year five naira per every dollar received from abroad we want people to bring money into the system to circulate around even though nigeria is not a perfect country this is what our west african neighbor nigeria is doing is the government of Ghana giving a peswa to somebody who brings money inside the country from abroad? No. Do you know what the Rana want to do? They want to tax the money, isn't it? Lazy people. Lazy people. Your reward is waiting for you. Before you, you guys end up in hell, we will deal with you on this planet here. Yes. Serious, serious young guys like us. We will deal with all of you. We are not going to fight you. No, 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 blood loss. We will deal with you using rationality. You see what we are doing? It's a movement though. Eh? You see what Tunibua Jonas is doing? You see what I'm doing? It's a movement, man. It's a movement. A time is going to come. It's going to pick up. And you see that people are fed up. I'm telling you. It is a movement, man. This whole thing going on on social media where people are beginning to show comparison of what is going on here and there. It's a whole movement. One day, one day, it's going to fly up. It's going to fly up. Not in a revolution. It's going to fly up. And people are going to say, enough is enough. We're going to chase the politicians out of power. I'm telling you. You think it's a joke? It's no joke at all, man. There will be no blood lost. There will be no bloodshed. But a time will come. People will be so educated to tell when we are being taken for granted. What is happening to us? The government of Nigeria, the Central Bank of Nigeria, is giving Nigerians who are in Nigeria five naira per every dollar they, are, they, they receive from abroad through m m money transfer. And you in Ghana, what are you doing? Lazy people in power. Is that what you want to do? Lazy people in power. Corruption everywhere. Grabbing land. See them. See how the government appointees are getting rich. Watch them. Watch them. You hear them. They are in the news. So today they are launching this. Today they, now it's only their people who are doing well. It is only the people in government that are doing well. You watch them. They are the ones creating the businesses. Family and friend businesses here and there. You go to the airport. You go everywhere. They are running every area. Why? They are, they are strategically positioning themselves so that when they go out of power, they have already locked the future of their whole generation. And then what happened to you and I? Who have no political connections? Who don't know anybody? 
In fact, in the past, they used to say, you should know somebody whom you know. That's what they say. They say, before you succeed in Africa, you must know somebody whom you know. Today, it's not even about whom you know. It is about who knows you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm sweating, man. I need to take this suit off. It is even winter. Eh? If you see me sweating in winter, you know that it's about. It's, it's, it's serious. I'm even sweating, guys. I'm sweating. Seriously. It is no longer about who you know in Africa to succeed. Oh. It is not about who knows you. You can know somebody, but you still not succeed. You, the person must actually know you well, well. What is happening, man? It is so sickening. Guys, Africa is not poor. We have more money than anyone else. More resources than anyone else. Better weather than like anyone else. I tell you every single day, and I will say this until I die. The biggest thing holding Africa back is the corruption of our leadership. If countries like Bangladesh, which are not developed, are given incentive to encourage people to send money electronically, where did you get your policy idea from? Finally, how much testing have we done on that public policy? It is called e-levy policy, isn't it? How, how much testing have we done on this policy? In other words, how many white papers have we received on this policy? How many civil society engagements have we done to say that we want to invite all the civil society organizations come and punch hole into this policy and let's see whether it will stand the test of time. Let's invite CDD Ghana. Let's invite Imani Ghana. Let's invite all the smart people who are actually doing research on public policy. Let's do consultation and public engagement and let's even listen to what Ghanaians are saying about it. And see whether the policy that we have in mind is strong enough to stand the test of time. Guess what? No white paper. No consultational. They will just manage it through parliament. Boom, approve it. Huh? And when we finish, you see the civil society organizations complaining. They didn't consult us. So no consultation. And so where would they do them? Yes. No public consultation. No listening to divergent opinions. Not even listening to what the government, opposition governments will say. We will skim it through parliament and use draconian ways to bulldoze our way and then, boom, pass it. No public consultation, no consultative process in place. It will end up becoming a public policy. Is this how countries develop? Do you know how much scrutiny they put their policies through here before they pass them? Do you know how much scrutiny they put their public policies through here in the West world before they pass them. Huh? And how do we behave like we are detectors all around, just shoving things down on the truth of people, down the truth of people? Can I give you an example of lack of testing of our public policies? Recently, they said they were changing the educational cal calendar in Ghana from the three semester, three terms, they were changing it to a semester. No consultation. Nothing was done. They will not consult. They will not do public engagement. They will not do media engagement. They will not ask whether this is the best practice in other countries. So they won't do. And then they will start it. They will allow our children to even start the semester system. And then they will do a U-turn and say, ah, we are wrong. Go. As we are about to start it, somebody says it's not good. So let's go back to the old. Is that not what they are doing right now in Ghana with education? Is that not what they are doing right now? But I tell you, our people there, they don't care about us. You see, you see what I mean? I just give you an example. Look at what they are doing with education. They are playing... Mama Kedada with education, isn't it? Eh? Pilolo. Eh? eh? Blue bed, blue bed. How old are you? Three semester. Oh, no. Three times. Is that what they are doing? No testing. Serious governments are not run like this, man. <laughs> Guys, I, I ain't joking with you. No serious government is run like this. It's a joke. Propaganda. That's all. Pure propaganda. What is the way forward for Africa? Not just Ghana. Because this situation I described here in Ghana is the same situation across Africa, almost everywhere. Same elite corruption. Nigeria, Cameroon, Nigon, Pobia, all of them. Go and see Pobia of Cameroon. How long has he been in power? Does he ever lose election? Even if he's 100 years old, that guy will win election tomorrow. Even if he's 100. The next, even if he's 100 years old, Pobia will win election tomorrow in, in, in Cameroon. Guys, 
It's not just Ghana. It is everywhere in Africa, in the developing world. Elite corruption. The, the governments in the Western world, they are not perfect too. There is also corruption here. Oh. Hey! US, they have corruption. Oh. Canada, they have corruption. Oh. But you know the advantage here? They are corruption. You know, they stink. Oh. They, they make sure, say, they, 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 they um, um, make it sure, say, Niankrofono more down, Ibe Dini de Ubiya Nyanedio. Good road, good hospitals, good this. Eh? We are not saying humans are perfect. We know people will be corrupt. But at least the Western world, they make sure that the things that will, the distribution goes down for people to feel. You see, they give $2,000 every month to people who are affected with COVID. Oh. And then they will still maybe $20,000. That's how they do it too. But in Africa, eh? <laughs> we, don't, we don't give our people. Oh. We, we, we don't give them. We take everything from them. <laughs> there is corruption in the Western world. That is true. UK government, there is corruption. But you know the difference? They still attend to the critical things of the masses. Good roads, good schools, good healthcare, universal. They provide all this, the good traffic system, good transportation system. So at the end of the day, when they steal, people don't tend to complain too much. Why? Because at least they are trickling down some of the political distribution. In Africa, we don't distribute nothing. Everything is concentrated in the pockets of a few. Family and friends are running governments today. They block everywhere else and nobody gets in. They run all the big businesses around. Nobody else gets in. If you try, they'll bring you down. What is my solution for Ghana? Beyond E-Levy? We need a new movement. You heard me right. We need a new movement. We need a new movement. We need a new breeze passing through Ghana. Not NDC, not MPP, not CPP, not Equadonco, nobody. We need a new breeze of people coming together to change our democracy for a better one. Are we replacing our democracy with dictatorship? No, I don't believe in dictatorship. But we need to know that democracy we have created today in Ghana has made it easy for people to become corrupt. We need a new constitution. That constitution there makes the country more corrupt. It is not in tune with the times. We need a brand new constitution. We need a brand new constitution. A brand new constitution that will reflect where we are in the modern days. A brand new constitution that will put serious checks and balances and responsibilities and hold people accountable. We need a new movement. No NDC, no MPP. And where do I think it's going to come from? It's going to come from all over the world, from all nations. Ghanaians all over the world. Ghanaians in Israel. Ghanaians in Germany. Ghanaians in Canada. Ghanaians in USA. Ghanaians in Spain. Ghanaians in UK. Who are saying we've seen the good world. We've seen the better rules here. Enough is enough. We are not going to pretend we are okay. Because the next two things three generations of Ghanaians to come who come from my family and when I die and I go in the next 20 30 years when Chaka Millionaire goes I don't know what is going to happen to my grandchildren so today we are going back to Ghana and we are going to come together and we are going to kick this idiots out of power that is what I'm talking about if you are watching me today this is a call to you we must rise up we must rise up and form the power of the country is in the people the power of the people is more powerful than the power of the people in power. Listen carefully. The power of the ordinary people is always too powerful. I am calling on anybody listening today. Drop your political card. Drop it down. Put your NDC lens down for one sake. We've done this for 30 years since 1992. Since 1992. Three decades. No progress. Enough is enough enough is enough if we will develop we would have seen signs already we are just dilly darling one step forward thousand backwards one step forward thousand backwards 1992 ghana's democracy was born three decades has passed where are we it is a generation do you know one generation another country has already developed do you know it takes just a generation to see a whole country develop we have already completed one cycle of a generation. What can we show for it? Nothing. I am too smart to tell you that if we give the government of Ghana or the political parties in Ghana another generation, we'll be at the same place or even worse off than we are. Wake up, my people. 
Don't even think you are powerless. You are not. You are not powerless. It's just your thumb. But you are not powerless. Somebody should tag Trinibua Jonas in this video. Somebody should tag anybody who is championing a cause like this. I want to see a new generation starting from social media. Where one day I will go and board a plane to return to Ghana. Not because I want to visit my father. Not because I want to visit my mom. But because I want to come and build Ghana. We want people who will lay their life down for Ghana like Kwame Krumah did. We want people who will say, no more ex gratia We want people who will say, no more land cruisers. We want people who will say, no more private jets. We care about Ghana. We've lived in the Western world. We know it is possible. If these people did it, we can do it too. We've tested it too much. And we know we can do this back home. Are you listening today? This call is for you. I don't care whether you hold an h &D or not. I don't care whether you have no education. I want you to know you are powerful. Do you know you can get a government out today if we really want you? All we need is to unite. I will support a political party called the New Ghana Movement. Not the party. A new movement of young men and women who say enough is enough. Enough of cheating ourselves and losing at the end. That when I cheat my brother and my sister, we all suffer together. Enough is enough. The fact that I'm stealing and doing a goro business and doing a corrupt deal and I'm succeeding does not mean my next three generations will succeed. When you die today, what legacy will you leave for your unborn children and your grandchildren? When I die today, what will my daughter Joanna and John Henry go through if they go back to Ghana? That is what I care about. And I'm sending this caution. Don't make the mistake of putting me in a political boss. I won't fit. I won't fit. Not even NDC. They can't even get close to me. Not even MPP. My mission is for the youth. My mission is to organize you guys. My mission is to create that consciousness. My mission is to call our daddies and our grandfathers, 50, 60 years who are retirement, that you may be retiring poor, but you got to make sure today you sow a seed before you die, that nobody will be taken for granted. No NDC will take us for granted. No MPP will take us for granted. Enough is enough. I hate the e levy with all my blood and my strength. You probably may have noticed I'm screaming, I'm shouting. Yes, my pressure is up. I hate it. It's a corruption scheme. It's a grand scheme to elude us. I don't care about IMF. I don't care whether it is a requirement from the IMF to get our economy back. They have embezzled too much money. Why do, should IMF come and bail us out? They are going to tell you we need this so that we can restructure the economy. Nonsense. After messing up this much in how many years? Why should we trust you again with more money? Yes, I rather want to see the economy of Ghana on Indy so that we can rethink and reorganize ourselves. We don't need an IMF bailout. We don't need an IMF bailout. We've already been bailed out already. Through HIPIC. What did you do with it, guys? Did we not get a bailout from IMF? It was not called HIPIC. They forgave us all our debt. What did we do? What did we do with it? And we are back to square one? Wake up, my people. Wake up. I don't care whether they say they need this to meet a condition for IMF. It's not true. They're going to embezzle the money again. And they'll come up and tell you another manifesto, manifesto. They'll give you all kinds of things. Breaking the word, breaking the breaking the tent, breaking the aid nonsense. They're going to tell you another one again. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Share this video. Wake up. If you really care, share this video everywhere. What's up? Everywhere. Share this. I want to see people who step forward and say, look. Even though I'm living a good life in Germany, I want to see Ghana do well. Ghana deserves good roads. Ghana deserves good schools. Ghanaian children deserve the best. Ghanaian poor people deserve the best. Our poverty should not be a license to misery. Poor people here are living better because the government here distributes well and everybody gets it. A sick person today is getting covered by the government. Are you getting covered? Your wife is going through surgery right now. You need money to do surgery for your wife. Is the government supporting you? I want you to wake up, man. Your wife has fibroids. She's about to deliver. Is the government covering your wife's surgery? In serious countries, they are covered. Your birth is covered. In serious countries, you don't need to pay money to even deliver. Because the taxes are used well. 
When I went to the hospital, I did not pay money to deliver my child. If God forbid my wife had a fibroid, I would not need money to pay surgery. They would do it and take care of that. Taxes is the same taxes. Is that what you are getting today? Today, I'm asking you, your father or your mother is having stroke or they need dialysis, money for dialysis. Is the government taking care of you? Wake up, my people. Wake up, my people. That money you need for dialysis, shouldn't your government be taking care of it? If the government really cares about the youth, shouldn't the government be saving the lives of people? Do you know in serious countries where they distribute money well through taxes, these things are all covered. And yet in our own countries, the monies end up in the pockets of corrupt people. Dialysis cannot be taken care of. Major surgeries cannot be taken care of. A woman would die today in the hospital. A man would die today from some simple sicknesses. No monies. Is this the kind of country we want to run? Wake up, my people. Wake up, my people. Wake up, my people. You've never seen me go so political, right? And I know many of you will be offended. But this is my call to you. God has blessed you with three things. God has blessed you with a conscience. It will convict you. God has blessed you with a voice. God has blessed you with an intellect. Did you hear that? God has blessed you with three things. Your conscience, your voice, and your intellect. Look deep down and tell me, why the hell are you supporting that political party? Why the hell are you putting your life down for that political party? Is it because of what you are going to get for you and your family? Is it because of what you are going to get? Or you care about seeing that everybody can rise up? Huh? Why the hell are you supporting that political party? Thanks so much for watching. I pray and wait that this video will go viral. I pray and pray that you will believe in this and wear your conscience and be convicted that enough is enough enough of supporting mpp because i'm an account enough of supporting mpp because of what i'll get tomorrow enough of supporting ndc because i'm an airway or a northerner enough of supporting mpp because i'm a christian or a muslim enough is enough we must rise god bless you and thanks for watching may the e levy be buried may he be shut down may Ghanaians get so angry and may Ghanaians mobilize those of us abroad and those of us. May everybody take to Facebook and do video that will trend to shame the stealers. They are looking for money. Oh. Two years from now is another election. They are looking for money to run campaign. Oh. I'm telling you, they are looking for money. Oh. They are about to go and do campaign. They are looking for money. Oh. Look at my face. Wait, 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 wait. They want to steal. Oh. They want to steal. They are looking for money. They are looking for money. May we say no to them in all seriousness. Use your platform. Go live on your Facebook. You don't need to be Choco Millionaire. I don't care whether you can talk or you can't talk. Take your phone, record, and say no to the e-levy. Let it trend. Take your phone, share it on WhatsApp. Say no to the e-levy. Eh? I don't care about political party or your religion. Say no to the e-levy. It is demonic. It is from the pit of hell. It doesn't meet the requirements of modern tax. It is actually fraud that is about to be perpetrated. God bless you, and thanks so much for watching. My name is Choco Millionaire. I'm a Ghanaian, 100% Ghanaian. I live in Canada, but I love Ghana more than anything. I've earned every right to talk about Ghana. The E-Levy is a fraud. God bless you, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.